It's Tuesday, February 22nd, and the time for your Barbados Today Bond News Update. Urgent reform is coming to the Barbados Licensing Authority. That's according to Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Transport, Works and Water Resources, Santia Bradshaw, who admitted that the government institution had several structural flaws that needed to be remedied. She made the comments while pointing out that the licensing authority was still battling with a backlog of over 5,000 driver's licenses. It also requires, um, Mr. Speaker, I think a deeper look at the structure of the licensing authority. Um, there are a number of positions that have not been filled that have also impacted on the ability of the staff to be able to properly execute. We have a lot of good staff, but we also have some challenges in terms of structurally trying to get these, um, these things done. And so in the interim, we may have to now outsource certain services to be able to have the, um, the, uh, the, the driver's licenses scanned and be able to um, have a system of distributing them to the general public as well. Now, the good news is that there is already in motion plans for the modernization of the licensing authority. Uh, we started, I believe it was in 2020, with a process for um, ensuring that persons could pay for the renewal of their license online. With regards to the backlog, the Deputy Prime Minister said efforts were continuing to deliver those driver's licenses that had already been paid. She said that the Licensing Authority's partnership with the General Post Office in delivering those licenses had not gone as smoothly as planned. But regrettably, we still have a number of licenses that are still in the possession of the Licensing Authority. Um, we, despite having um, utilized the services of the General Post Office to assist us in delivering licenses to actual homes so that we could deliver directly to persons for people who paid online, we ran into a situation where in some cases we had um, incorrect addresses or the persons were not able to find the individuals at the time. And so we still do have a number of those licenses which would have been in the possession of the General Post Office, uh, which are still to be delivered. So of about the 15,769 driving licenses sent to the General Post Office, we have to date been able to deliver 9,640, leaving a total of 5,221 still to be delivered. Of that number, we have about 908 that were returned to the Barbados Licensing Authority um, because those persons could not be found at the address or in some cases they had given, as I said before, the incorrect um, address. Barbadians will soon have their new digital national trident identification cards. Word of this from Minister of Industry, Innovation, Science and Technology, Davidson Ishmael, one Monday announced that the new cards will be rolled out in the coming months. The new digital ID cards will replace the current laminated identification cards and also driver's licenses. In addition, persons can also opt to have their fingerprints and medical information embedded in the new cards. It is new Trident ID card will be launched during this first quarter of 2022. And I can assure the House through you, Mr. Speaker, that this project is, an ex is at an extremely advanced stage of its development. And we are confident that, barring no unforeseen circumstances, that we shall be well able to deliver this exciting new Trident ID card in the coming months. Most of the technical work, Mr. Speaker, has been completed, and my technical team is currently in the phase of beta testing all of the technical aspects of the solution to ensure that we have compliance with international data security standards. And Mr. Speaker, may I assure this House and the people of Barbados by extension and through you that we are checking every detail connected with this card. 
government inches closer with its plans for a new geriatric hospital. This says Parliament approves almost $1.5 million for the design of the new facility within the environs of the National Botanical Gardens. The amount is part of an over $1.9 million being taken from the Consolidated Fund to supplement spending for the Prime Minister's office. Minister in the Ministry of Finance and Economic Affairs, Ryan Strawn, said uh, that uh, the $1,452,000 will be used by the Barbados Tourism Investment Inc., which is managing uh, the urban rehabilitation program in Bridgetown, within which the project falls. If we are going to provide a much more scenic and ideal um, environment for our elderly population to be able to spend out their golden years. We feel, sir, it is important that we get this work started and that the BTI, BTII, which certainly I think, based on what Barbadians have seen certainly taking place within the confines of Bridgetown, that their records, sir, of executing with respect to these projects, I think um, all the, the whole entire country can be proud of and therefore this specific um, intervention here is to allow them to be able to start the development works as it relates to the design of the new geriatric hospital whilst we work, sir, to make sure then that we can deal with the other administrative matters. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, my name is Michelle Hines and I own a company called HM Novelties. I have three children two of which are under the age to get the vaccine and that makes them vulnerable. And the eldest, she is vaccinated and that's a good thing because all she wants to do is hang with her friends. I take care of my 80 year old mum, and she has many comorbidities. And I love my mum, and I would not want for anything to happen to her. I am one of the ones that suffered absolutely no symptoms for either the first or the second jab. When you have the vaccine, you have a weapon to fight against this virus, to fight against this beast. 95% of my friends and family are vaccinated and that literally makes me feel secure. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. News from the region, now is not the time to let Haiti fall off the agenda. That was the advice of the United Nations Special Representative for Haiti, Helen Lalim, to the Security Council. Addressing the Security Council recently, she disclosed that the situation in the country remains fraught and highly polarized, despite some signs of progress. Negotiations among proponents of competing transition governance models have now reached the stage where success will be determined by their collective willingness to compromise. The contours of a common vision shared by all will ultimately depend on Haitian stakeholders placing the national interest above their own aspirations and being flexible on the finer points of the process. For Haiti to emerge from the acute political and institutional crisis in which it's plunged, it is imperative that all Haitian leaders resolve to engage constructively with one another to stir the country towards a process that will allow elections to occur. The international community must also continue to engage with the Haitian government and other stakeholders not only to support efforts to create the necessary security and political conditions for the holding of national elections, but also to ensure that urgent structural reforms are undertaken to tackle gang violence, address impunity and corruption, strengthen the justice system, and transform the economy in a sustainable manner. Now is not the time to let Haiti fall off the agenda. To developments on the international front, all COVID restrictions will end in England on Thursday and free mass testing will stop from April 1st. Prime Minister Boris Johnson made the announcement as he unveiled his government's living with COVID plan. Today's strategy shows how we will structure our approach in England around four principles. 
First, we will remove all remaining domestic restrictions in law. From, from this Thursday, 24th of February, we will end the legal requirement to self-isolate following a positive test. And so, we will also end self-isolation support payments, although COVID provisions for statutory sick pay can still be claimed for a further month. We will end routine contact tracing and no longer ask fully vaccinated close contacts and those under 18 to test daily for seven days. And we will remove the legal requirement for close contacts who are not fully vaccinated to self-isolate. Until the 1st of April, we will still advise people who test positive to stay at home. But after that, we will encourage people with COVID-19 symptoms to exercise personal responsibility. Just as we encourage people who may have flu to be considerate to others. Mr. Speaker, it's only because levels of immunity are so high and deaths are now, if anything, below where you would normally expect uh, for this time of year that we can lift these restrictions. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.